brands create themselves if you give them the opportunity to let that happen. So regardless of whether you're making an effort as a business to create your brand or cultivate a brand, um, your audience, your customers, they will build a brand for you. Regardless. Your brand and its reputation needs to be protected because if you let that fall apart, you're hooped. Brands create themselves if you give them the opportunity to let that happen. So regardless of whether you're making an effort as a business to create your brand or cultivate a brand, um, your audience, your customers, they will build a brand for you regardless. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Challenge Tunity podcast. If it is your first time here, welcome. We appreciate it. If you've been here before, once, twice, you know, 16 times, we appreciate you uh, secretly a little bit more. Um, my name is Chris Lawson. I'm your host. Um, we got a very, I don't know, I think different episode today talking all about brand reputation. Um, but before we jump into that, well, I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Jordan Wolf, who believes the best condiment on a burger is peanut butter because it is delicious and full of protein. Jordan, how are you doing? That is actually true. I, I do like peanut butter burgers. And you do? I, yeah. Yeah. The, the the days that they were served in rep- restaurants before there was allergies and stuff, I miss those days. Mm. Mm. So yeah. what I'm hearing is that after 17 episodes, finally some truth has come out out of my intros. <laughs> yeah, you got one. <laughs> you I got one. Got... Okay. I've been trying. Yeah. I've been trying. No, yeah. I guess we'll let the cat out of the bag. Um, Jordan is known as the Ron Swanson of our office. And so majority of the intros have been unique, obscure uh, Ron Swanson facts. So um, the... The woodsman who's, you know, does, I can only dream to live up to the, to the Ron Swanson, but, uh, it's true. Uh, yeah, far, it's far true. less uh, interesting. Actually, Nick Offerman, the actor is, is quite interested in himself too. He's coming for like a comedy festival kind of mm-hmm. in our town, which is going to be interesting. I don't know what that would be like, but I feel like checking it out. Um, well, we, like I said, we have an interesting episode touching base on brand reputation. That's not usually a topic that I think we talk about very often until there's a problem, but it is something that I think if you're proactive with, you can, you can mitigate a lot of problems down the road. Yeah. And we've mentioned it between the lines a few times in prior episodes about, you know, the importance of brand, et cetera. So we've kind of talked past it without really addressing it directly. So, so it gives us the opportunity to do that a little bit more. Well, we want to touch on things like, you know, the importance of brand reputation, you know, building it, you know, how to fix a tarnished brand. But, you know, before we started recording, we kind of stopped and we went, you know, we should probably also just talk about like, what is brand? Mm. Like, what is, what is brand, Jordan? Like, like, cause it's not as simple as it's your logo, you know, which a lot of non-marketers would, would perceive brand mm. to be. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it does have multiple different de- definitions depending on what background you're coming from. The one I like to use is the one that's more associated what, with the role that it plays. So um, in most cases, when I'm talking to clients, I, I say that your brand is really, it's a storage of value. And the value is the things that you want it to represent about the experience, the way that you want it to be understood in the context of the marketplace, the way that your um kind of identity factors. So the things you want to be representing in in both your product or your service or the way that you're impacting the world, it stores all those things together. The thing it's not, and the thing is most commonly probably confused with um, is when you hear the word brand, a lot of people go to logo um, and Mm -hmm. agencies don't do a good job of, you know, (laughs) fixing this terminology problem either. Uh, A lot of them will offer like a branding package where they will design you a logo and maybe some business cards and things like that. But that's not really brand either. That's an identity set that they're producing for you. The brand is really the thing that gets attached to that identity set. So Mm -hmm. um, having a logo is very important because it's a good memory trigger for your brand. So that, you know, Nike as a word is a brand, Nike as a swoosh is a brand, um, but as an anchor to that brand. So they mean nothing on their own without me understanding what that product means to my life. Or, you know, if I'm an athlete, how that impacts me, maybe I like that brand, maybe I don't. 
Maybe I, I like how they produce products. Maybe I don't. All those things come into play into what your brand is and the perception of the customer. Correct. And and I think it goes a step further. Um, and it's it's funny. Um, anybody who's been watching Netflix over the last, you know, in the last pandemic, um, would have saw some specific comedians talking about, you know, hey, I am a brand. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's a joke because we live in a world nowadays where our identity and brand kind of sometimes coexist, you know, so, you know, we like a certain kind of cracker, you know, that we eat on our charcuterie boards. But at the end of the day, we want to know, does that cracker believe in, you know, are they pro-life or, you know, it's, we can't support brand unless they represent something that we resonate with. And so we live in a world nowadays where brand and brand reputation are not necessarily the same thing. You know, so Jordan, in your opinion, what would you say brand reputation is? Let's uh, put you on the spot. Well, yeah, <laughs> like I said, it, it's it, if if your brand is a storage of value, it is that perceived value. So yep. um, usually, it needs to be somewhat consistent. So you, as a company, usually will be striving to cultivate a certain brand. So if you want to be known for being very caring as part of your brand, then you should be doing things that you know help customers feel like they be, are being cared for maybe the way that you produce products is you know in tune with uh, environmental concerns as part of how you're presenting mm -hmm. how you're a caring brand all those things add up to a certain perception outside of your business the question is is then is that message being received is that perception held by enough of your audience to be consistent and therefore your brand is represented um, those things can be mismatched yeah. Those things can be previously matched and then you do something that detracts from that and you accidentally, you know, if I had a brand that I was trying to present as being caring, but then, you know, I, I learned that, uh, you know, I helped to, I don't know, tear down a, 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 a puppy rescue facility or something like that, that wouldn't Oof. fit with my brand. That would be something that would be, you know, kind I wouldn't of buy those crackers. non caring. Exactly. So those, those are the th situations where you can have a good brand and then it becomes tarnished over time or mm -hmm. becomes disconnected from those values that you were trying to connect it with. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because, you know, a lot of the time when we onboard clients, especially on social media, you know, that's when brand comes into, into play and you know, how are we building our brand and our brand awareness and all those things. And it's usually not something that companies just want to own or have it's it's usually because they want to sell more product or they want to grow geographically or whatever it is there's a buying journey a buyer's journey right there's a uh, a sales cycle that those individuals have to go through so you know reputation does influence your prospects mm. it, it just does um when 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 a company or or an individual does their own due diligence before they buy your product or give you a phone call or fill out a form, your reputation plays a factor in that buyer's journey. Let alone things like your attrition rates, clients retention. Your know, brand reputation is important to not only focus on, maintain, but but also jump on when you see that there's any kind of risk, any kind of concern. Taking it seriously is something that. Is, is something that it requires a proactive approach and as opposed to reactive, which you'll regret in the end. Yeah. And that, that's an important point with brand is brands create themselves if you give them the opportunity to let that happen. So regardless of whether you're making an effort as a business to create your brand or cultivate a brand, um, your audience, your customers, they will build a brand for you regardless. So if, even if you're not making a marketing effort, you're, you don't really care about your brand, your customers are going to look at the history of your product. They're going to look at the way that you treated them last time. They're going to look at the way that you are consistent in your communication or not. And they're going to form a brand about you that says, well, actually, they're not really that consistent. So I can't rely on them. So now all of a sudden you have a brand of unreliability. <laughs> That's yeah. not maybe yeah. what you wanted. Yeah. Um, that being said, sometimes there are weird situations where the brand that you're trying to cultivate may be a little bit counterintuitive. So for instance, your brand can also be what differentiates you in the market. So mm -hmm. even if you don't have a big uh, aspirational you know, reason to be the, the caring business, maybe that's what separates you from the other ones, right? So you know, the big car companies, for example, are not all that historically known for being the most caring businesses. But if you come up with a new car company that's you know all about being the caring one, now all of a sudden you've got something that stands you out from the crowd. Um, mm -hmm. It can also be the opposite way. So uh, restaurants, which are traditionally all about customer service, et cetera, 
you now have these like cafes and things that are all about having bad customer experience. You know, they'll kind of disregard you, not come to the table. They'll throw the menus at you. And it's all kind of an inside joke, but that's the brand they're cultivating, right? So that's how they differentiate themselves in the market. And it's part of the product experience. Well, I think what's really interesting about brand or brand reputation is it's always seems to be tied to revenue goals and, you know, trying to make sure that we're achieving our objectives that we've set for our, you know, fiscal year or whatever the case might be. But I know, I know for us, and, and I know we don't usually talk about Atrium very much in the podcast, but, you know, I, I just kind of realized over time that like your, your reputation, your brand specifically, it's brand reputation does impact employee recruitment and, and retention, you know? So like, for example, um, Atrium as an entity doesn't really have a lot of stance on political matters or, or anything we're, we're, we're equal opportunity and, you know, all these things, which, which we stand for. But the truth is we, we don't go out and promote things all the time. What we do is we kind of show it and we show it less from the perspective of Atrium supports this thing. And it's more our staff, the culture we have within this entity promotes certain things and and the company atrium supports its staff and so thus we've created a culture and a bit of a reputation within the in the the industry that we're in that we're a company that stands for certain values when it comes to its team members and how who it hires and the, and the type of environments we we build that all ties into your brand reputation and ultimately it's got to a point that when we are now starting to hire people people are looking into those things and going you know what, your reputation meets a standard that I would love to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're a business owner out there or, or, you know, maybe you're the HR going, yes, yes, this is correct. Don't just think of it as brand reputation and, and having it tied, be tied to like risk mitigation or tied to trying to hit your, you know, your fiscal year goals. Look at it from the perspective of how does the world view every single aspect of my organization? And that includes staffing and hiring. Yeah. And there's different yeah. levels of this occurring across society where you have people that are, let's say, com becoming wise to being sold to. Right. So there's a there's a, a saying in a lot of different disciplines, but writers very commonly will, will refer to this where, you know, show don't tell. Right. Brand is around that at its core to some degree. So you can maybe on paper put things on your masthead or, you know, maybe spray paint it on the wall that we care about this and we do that. Unless you're actually doing it, somebody's going to find out that you're not really living up to those standards, that you're not embodying those things. And when they do, you'll have no ground to stand on other than yeah. just saying like, no, no, we're, we're different than that. Well, prove it. You know, I don't, I'm not, I don't see that in the actual world. So, um, you know, step one is always, you know, living and doing the thing that you, you claim to be uh, representing in your brand um, and making that embodied in everything that you can. <clears throat> the oh second part of that is make it visible. So there's also a vacuum to it. Like if you're doing great things, yes, but nobody actually sees it, um, then you might as well not be doing them to some degree. So how do you feel? How do you feel about the hot take that you know in the end all you have is your brand? I agree. With I, that. I think that that yeah yeah I think that's mostly true. Um, there are there are short term things that can trump that. Like if you're not uh, making the fundamentals of your business model, then you're going to go out of business. You know you're not producing the product. You're not delivering good service. Um, <clears throat> but your brand is the thing that if your business continues, let's make that as the base assumption. If you're going to continue as a business, new competitors will come in. You know things you relied on for your business model will ebb and flow, and you'll have to make shifts and pivots. Your brand is the thing that should carry you through all of that and be, you know, consistent and allow you to have this storage of value. Um, that is one of the reasons I, I describe it as a storage of value because it allows you this huge advantage where, you know, even if you have to produce a new product because the market has shifted and you have to move into a different line of business or you have to showcase this new way of doing things, your brand is going to be telling a story in the background for you if you've built it. So you don't have to retell them like, oh, well, we're built on these fundamentals and da, da, da. You can just focus on that product's unique difference yeah. and go on with your business because the brand is doing all the other heavy lifting. So when, when again, I'm going to use Nike, launches a new shoe, they're understanding the whole history of that brand and the other shoes that produced it before mm -hmm. and the reasons that they support 
you know, sports and the role they play in the marketplace. So when they launch a new basketball shoe, they don't have to go like, guess what guys, we're producing a basketball shoe. It is a shoe going to be used for basketball. They can just get on with like, it's got these really cool elements to it and it's got this design and it's supported by this, you know, athlete. And they can start telling that part of the story. Well, and you already know it meets a certain quality, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, I think that for me, when, when we talk about it's all you have in the end really resonates when a business is trying to sell or if, um, maybe a principal or a key stakeholder or very influential person that's client facing leaves the company, right? It's not about your talent. It's not about the individual who's an important cog. At the end of the day, if you can't get new business because that individual left or your stakeholder or principal or owner left, your reputation wasn't built in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. And so this whole idea of in the end, all that really matters is your brand, I think has a lot of value. Do I think it's 100% everything? No, but I think that your your brand and its reputation needs to be protected because if you let that fall apart, you're hooped. It, it's harder to get it back than it is to protect, mm -hmm. you know? No, like your brand is, is something that, like we said, the, the logo is the store of it, but we've been talking a lot about product so far, you know, using the example of Nike, we've talked a lot about kind of just um, the things that you might promote through your marketing or messaging, but what about the actual service experience and how that plays a role? Well, I don't know. I, the first thing that came to mind is, you know, like the friendly plumber, <laughs> you know, like if you're that company that differentiates yourself, you know, like what's that moving company, uh, two guys with big hearts or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's ways of differentiating yourself with your brand, meaning your logos and all that kind of stuff, but your brand reputation as well will go a lot further. Um, it needs to align with those brand guidelines and the way that you've actually set yourself up. Um, the service industry is, is, you know, the hot take with that is that you're servicing. <laughs> like, I think sometimes we forget in the service industry that you actually have to service people. And that means you have to hold a certain standard. Um, and when you're building a brand, frankly, consistency is key when it comes to your messaging uh, your communication and, and sometimes communication, we think, oh, you know, that's how we, you know, produce a social post. No, no, no. That's how you respond to DMs. That's how mm -hmm. your customer service responds. That's how, that's how you your pick up the phone. Yeah. Your proposals are written a certain way. Like every single bit of communication needs to be aligned um, for, for any kind of brand implementation. Um so whether I, you know, full circle, whether you're in a service industry, a product industry, a non-for-profit, a municipality, you all have a brand. It 100%, it, I don't care if you have a tree on your logo or, a, you know, a pipe, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. You have a brand and what you stand for and how you live it will impact your reputation in the end and the consistency mm -hmm. of how you do that, whether it be by the day, by the week, the month, by the years, is what will build up, as per what Jordan said, um, you know, exponentially it'll become your brand. Yeah, a uh, Canadian cell phone company that will go unnamed for this story, uh, <laughs> for example. <laughs> I had uh, experiences when I a couple times had to call in to get support or service, and both times had just horrible service. Like they didn't seem to care about my questions, didn't seem to care about actually answering things. You know, I got given the standard lines and then sent nowhere. So in my opinion, that brand for that company, because I've had multiple experiences that told me a particular story, says they're bad at customer service. So yeah. that has been my understanding of that, that particular company ever since. And to the point where I don't, I refuse to do work with them. Um, that can be the importance of consistency. So mm -hmm. whatever you're presenting, whether it's something you're cultivating and managing and monitoring in your, your service experience, or that you're making sure that when you produce the product that it's produced consistently and has all the same elements and it's produced yes. in the same way to the same quality, all of those things add up to make a brand either positive or negative in that customer's mind. Um, a brand will yeah. be created no matter what. Well, I think, I think you have to have standards as well. And with those standards, they have to be enforced. You can't settle for anything less. So if, and ironically, and I, I want to be very clear, I don't know if this is the company you're talking about, but there is one telecommunication company in Canada where their brand or their slogan is like, the future is friendly. 
So if like, if you're being that bold and you're saying that is the reality that we're trying to portray, then you have to stand by that. That's your standard, which means everything that you do with your customer service needs to be timely. It needs to be excellent. You have to have a you know, spirit of excellence across the board because that's at the end of the day, what your brand is telling everybody. And if there's a disconnect between the way you want people to portray your brand, your messaging says it, but how you're servicing your brand reputation will a hundred percent be tarnished. No one will trust that um, your brand is reputable and that you're going to actually do what you say. And you can fill in the blank with any kind of company or any industry as well. And I can neither confirm nor deny whether that is the company in question. <laughs> well, I've had that experience as I think with every telecommunications yeah. company I've ever worked with. So um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, word, yeah. Word, word of advice for telecommunications companies is just you know, <laughs> do better. Uh <laughs> But it, on, the, on the front, right, um, we're living in a world nowadays where social media, over the last 10 years, 45% more of the, what is it? Social media was used, um, f I think it's 450 X, 450 mm -hmm. times more to, for customer service related complaints than in the past. So if you're not utilizing your digital marketing as a part of your brand reputation and how you're servicing, you're missing the mark. Like you have to monitor your posts and your comments. Um, and not every industry is an industry where you have a trip advisor, where there's reviews and things like that, where you have to monitor it, but you do have things like your Google reviews. You do have Facebook reviews. So, on, so you have to monitor it and you have to respond to every single one everyone yeah there's there's a common i think concern when people are first starting a business like do i even have a social media channel do i want to put up these pages because you're just opening mm -hmm. yourself up to potentially customers mentioning that they had a bad experience or complaining about something whether it's well founded or not um i think that people need to entrepreneurs business owners need to embrace that um, that's actually a gift in yeah. a lot of ways because if you think back, if you if you started a little restaurant and maybe it was really successful and then all of a sudden people just stopped showing up and it was like the 80s, you'd be like, what happened? What well, I don't understand. And, you know, at home, maybe there's like, yeah, I went there that one time and I just, you know, I, I had this one salad and it wasn't as good as it used to be. They changed out their lettuce and that was like the main favorite thing there. Um, these days, they'll post that after they leave that restaurant, probably on your socials and be like, you guys changed the lettuce. I liked it better before. You've got to bring it back. And I like I'm not iceberg. coming back till you do. <laughs> and then we get like two or three of those. You're like, oh, okay, we really got to change that lettuce back because apparently that's a big deal. Um, you have a first line of defense, a first warning symbol yes. sign, like your your earlier warning system. Identifier. And you know that that can be a huge blessing if you're monitoring it and if you're you know, responding in a way that's not going to make things worse. So there's a whole strategy to that and how you handle things uh, in a PR related way. You know, I had a thought, like you started off by saying, you know, it's a blessing or, or it's a gift, I think is what you said. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. If you go back 15, 20 years ago, those platforms didn't exist, which mm -hmm. meant if you needed something like that, you had to spend tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars developing something that way, or the infrastructure alone to be able to, you know, connecting to some DOS prompt system, like, like it's free guys, use it, just take mm -hmm. it seriously. Don't, don't sit back and allow people to dictate what happens with your, with your reputation. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, things happen, things happen. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. Like we, we had a situation once where this is a true story, uh, and of course, nameless, um, we had a local politician come and randomly put a big, like local, um, you know, civic election sign on the lawn of our office building. And somebody who was a public figure who didn't like that individual who was running for city council or whatever, decided to attack us because that individual did a post saying, hey, look at this company, I'm supporting local small business. And they went, oh, and they threw us under the bus and we tur it turned into this huge dilemma, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes things and just we as a business happen. Had, had no relation to it. It's just, it just was <laughs> there and our logo was near it. It's because our yeah. building's on a corner and somebody put it on yeah. the corner thinking traffic. Anyways, it was just, 
it happened. It, these things can happen. And sometimes your brand can get thrown into the spotlight. Sometimes your brand and its, and its reputation and what you stand for um, can be in question. You know, so I guess the real question is like, how do you fix a tarnished brand? Or maybe it's not tarnished. Maybe it's just at risk. You know, so what, what would you say is kind of like the first step if you were well, advising somebody? Yeah, I mean, I mean, even the first first step is understanding what your brand is. Like, like I said, you're either going to have one created for you by your customers, which is not the best way to do that, or you're going to be cultivating one and maybe doing that for quite some time. And it can go wrong, and that's fine. But if you didn't do that, or you've been relying on your customers, you need to know what you want to represent. What is the thing you're trying to correct to or to build in the first place? So understanding what your brand represents, understanding those elements of the experience, the product, the, the background, the philosophy, all those things kind of combined together, and then understanding what are the actions that are going to add up to that experience, that kind of show, don't tell. So you know, if you've gone awry from something, having the ability to kind of look back at that and go, you know, if I was to study this like a crime that went, you know, wrong, working backwards from, well, I was supposed to be doing this to represent that kind of concept in my brand. Was I doing that? Was I living up to that? What were my staff trained on that element? Mm -hmm. You know, did I have, um, you know, the right supplier for the product materials to maintain the quality that I, I claim to have had? All those things kind of as a self analysis tool. The other side to it is talk to your customers. <laughs> They're yeah. going to be the ones that will tell you what went wrong, why, when, and how. And if if you have any value in their lives, they're going to be very passionate about telling you those things. So that can seem a little scary at first, but that passion is, again, mm -hmm. potentially a good thing if you're able to harness it and go like, hey, you know, you just helped this business that you were passionate about become better or fix yeah. a problem or, you know, get back to the, the thing that you used to love. Yeah. I mean, if if brand, you know, reputation is new to you, um, or it's it's one of those things where you know something's popped up. Sometimes that can be the tip of the iceberg, and there's a lot more under the surface. So one of the first steps that you have to do is do a really quick audit. It doesn't take long. Just Google, take a look, figure out where people are commenting about you. Um, it could be forums. It could be you know an industry specific you know platform that has to do with renovations or whatever the case may be. It it could be as simple as Google, Facebook, or, you know, somebody commenting on your social channels, do that audit. But once you understand where you could potentially be vulnerable, address and rectify all bad content um, and do it offline. So a, like a, a good kind of PR tip is like, let's say you did a social post and somebody did a really negative comment and said, mm, I don't think so. And they called somebody out or they did whatever message them directly and get it offline and do a comment directly underneath that and say, Hey, we've sent you a direct message. We're, we're, we're you know, we're working on it to, to help, you know, rectify or solve your concern or whatever. The rest of the world will see that like everybody's intelligent. We all understand that things happen. Sometimes people get ticked off. We've all gone to the same restaurant and some people say it's the best and other people say they'll never eat there again. So, you know, get it offline so that you don't have an mm -hmm. entire feed full of bickering and, and resolution that you're airing your laundry it's, in front of the rest of the world. It's the same thing like designing a product is never done well by a committee. It's the same thing with like addressing complaints. You may have a yeah. hundred people that had the same experience, but it sparked in them 50 different reasons why that's a problem for them. So having those one-on-ones is better. Even if you have 50 one-on-ones, than one piece of muddled feedback that you don't really know what to make of. So, you know, make sure you're making it productive for yourself and that individual is going to feel really, you know, hurt. So, you know, you end up talking to 50 people, all 50 people are going to leave going like, I don't know if they're going to yeah. solve that problem, but I at least feel hurt. Um, yeah. versus allowing them to kind of communicate with themselves just makes them feel unheard or a lost voice in a crowd. Well, and, and the truth is, you know, being apologetic, um, transparent and having a game plan is really important, right? And we live in a world where if somebody, and maybe this is your spouse, your spouse goes, ah, I don't like how you do this or whatever the case might be. If you just go and solve the issue, although that is going to fix the long-term game plan um, without acknowledging the issue, the heart issue or anything, you're going to have a problem that it, it's just going to keep coming up. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, in some form or another. And so I think providing transparency, being apologetic, and then having a game plan with that individual is, is always, always a good game plan on, 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 you know, rectifying any kind of tarnished brand scenario or, or any kind of bad comment that you're being attacked with. Yeah. Um, Having that deep understanding of what you were trying to build as well as, again, a mm -hmm. good defense on that for yourself. Just to be like, you know what, you're right. We didn't live up to that standard. And that standard is something we want to cultivate. So, you know, here's what we're going to do. Or here's what I'd like some, you know, feedback on that so we can learn what to do better next time. Yeah. Sometimes, though, so it's the opposite. Maybe somebody's complaining about something that represents something you don't want to be part of anymore. Maybe you have pivoted for a reason. Like maybe people are like, oh, you know, I'm never going back to McDonald's again because you don't serve pizza. And you might argue back the pizza is disgusting. So why would we do that? But that's, <laughs> uh, I guess, your choice that you can make as a brand. Uh, I hear you. You know, leveraging positivity is also another really good tip. So, um, you know, like user content where, you know, especially if you're like, I don't know, maybe you're uh, a company um, that, I don't know, sells exercise equipment, you know, and people are tagging you using their treadmill or their weights or, you know, whatever the case might be, utilize that user content as much as you can so that you're reinforcing consistently. You know, unfortunately, sometimes a bad comment, a bad post just can't be removed. That's just the reality. But burying it with positivity is the next best step, whether that be in getting positive reviews, showcasing that, hey, you know, you got, so what, you got 4.9 stars now. That's actually not a bad thing. But if you're now into three, well, it's probably because you haven't been focusing on positive reviews at all this entire time. Mm -hmm. Keep burying it with positivity. Um, get your and social proof just, going. just want to yeah. watch the world burn. So you can't help them all either. So. It is true, but let's try not putting fuel on our, on their fires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, just kind of wrapping up, you know, our, our segment here, brand reputation is something that can be tricky. There are tips, tricks, best practices. It's easy to find information online. You don't have to just take this episode as the, you know, textbook on how to handle brand reputation, but hopefully we provided some tips. Um, just be proactive with it. Don't sit back, designate somebody in your office who's responsible for it so that it's actually part of their day to day or, you know, a weekly check-in or, Hey, once a month, just pop in and see what's going on. Uh, some industries that's by the minute, but again, mm -hmm. don't, don't allow others to dictate your reputation for you own it. And write it down somewhere so you have some sort of a ruler to measure things on so you know whether you're living up to it or not in any given point in time and you're and again you're being consistent over time because you're representing the same things you claimed to yesterday and the month before that and the year before that yeah yeah well jordan it is that time though yes it is time to, it is time to conclude the challenge tunity podcast um if this was your first time and you found something that you found enlightening or maybe you know there was some feedback or hey i've implemented that and it worked or hey here's another tip that works for me comment on our social media send us a message we'd love to hear your feedback and obviously continue to to listen um we are wherever you can get your podcast spotify and apple and google and so on and so forth as well as if you're listening you can see our bright shiny faces on the youtube um so don't forget you can always watch us as well as that might be scary for some i don't know jordan but maybe it's scary that's better. for me so yeah it's scary for you <laughs> <laughs> and as usual subscribe you know we 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 issue a lot of of content throughout the week um, and if you subscribe, you'll know when there's a new episode, which comes out every two weeks. Um, so, you know, there's 17 episodes so far. So if there's, you know, time that you're trying to kill, go back and check out the other 16. There's some pretty interesting topics that you can find there. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, me too. Me too. It was a good one. Hope you're all doing well and we'll catch you in two weeks. Adios. Adios.